Great to have you back on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today goes to the southeast where there seems to be a blame game and back and forth you know, between the current Imo State Governor and of course the former Governor of Imo State, Urucha Sukurucha. The IPOB has also joined in the discussion you know, and blamed security agencies in the state uh, for brutalizing. They've even used words like a genocide in the southeast you know, by police officers and of course uh, by the APC government. Besides the IPOB, the governor of the state, Hopo Zodimma, and the former state uh, governor, Rocha Sukorocha, are also exchanging blame as to the cause of security challenges currently, um, you know, um, um, bedeviling Imo state. Um, a few days ago, of course, the governor was quoted as saying that some of the suspects arrested um, you know, said that they were sent by Rocha Sokorocha. But of course, this morning in the uh, news that we shared, you know, the governor once again has said that or you know, failed to reveal those sponsors of terrorism in the state. We're speaking this morning with Barrister Justice Uwebu, who is a human rights lawyer. Thank you very much for joining us and good morning. Thank you. It is my pleasure once more. Happy New Year to everybody. Same to you. Let, let's uh, first of all, you know, start with some clarity as, as to what exactly is going on in Imo State. You know, we, we, we will eventually look at the Southeast, uh, but Imo State seems to be the one making headlines with regards to security challenges in the last few weeks. Yes, uh, it's actually quite unfortunate that uh, Imo State that is known for peace and hospitality uh, in Nigeria is now uh, a, a, home, a home of terror. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, let me put it that way, I am from Imo State. So it's so unfortunate what we are seeing in this era. It has never been in fact. For in fact, Imo State in the history of Nigeria, you can make your inquiries. Imo State has been known for peace and tourism. People feel safe coming to Imo State any day, any time, at any hour stay and enjoy themselves. But unfortunately, everything went gaga. We don't actually know what is happening in, in this state. In as much as we know, there's insecurity all over the country. But the question is now is, why Imo State? There's no, there's no industries in Imo State. There's no major industries in Imo State. No major attraction in Imo State and all the way. So one will begin to wonder, why all this, in, you know, a, 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 a security Serious challenges in Imo State. It's so unfortunate, I have to tell you the truth. And I believe everybody in this country, especially from the South, is also by that idea. Well, well, are these still situations of the unknown gunmen, you know, that we're talking about here? Um, or are these just, you know, attacks here and there, you know, that used to be in existence? Are we still to, because, you know, I'm sure you would also agree that the uh, situation on the unknown gunmen that plagued the southeast, you know, in the last uh, few months of 2021, uh, you know, we don't hear a lot of those stories anymore. So is this, you know, the same unknown gunmen situation in Imo State? Or is there something more? Well, the truth is that, um, you know, uh, this whole insecurity, actually, if you trust history, started uh, about, uh, about last year, especially within the period and after the time of the Enfast protest and all the rest. And the Imo, all, Imo State also became worse uh, what after the, um, what do you call it, the jailbreak and all the rest. So uh, many Imo lights started hearing this, this slogan of unknown government. In fact, but truly speaking, this thing is, is, is unknown to, 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 to Imo people. Many Imo people heard about this unknown government uh, you know, for the first time. Actually, who had always had about bandit train, Boko Haram, insurgency, and all the but it has never happened in the Imo State before. So, unknown government, unknown government. Why are we saying unknown government? Yes, yeah, because they are government that are not known. So, whether they are police officers, whether they are military officers, whether they are civil defense officers, or whatever, that is carrying go, or whether they are private individuals. Provided that one cannot identify these people. That is why it is called unknown government. So, but in the past, you begin to see that after the jailbreak, the security situation in Imo State worsened somehow. And it has continued that way to a certain level. In All right. Uh, we seem to be um, struggling with feed from uh, Barrister Justice Uwebu. 
Uh, once again, the conversation is, you know, on what currently is going on in Imo State with regards to insecurity. Um, of course, reports of attacks here and there. And, um, you, you know, instead of, you know, the proper, proper security architecture and, of course, the police uh, clarifying, you know, we're instead hearing from governors and ex-governors. Um, it's really just, you know, to have a clear picture of what exactly might be going on in the state. Who really is to blame and whose responsibility should it be? Uh, to solve these challenges, the federal government or the state government. And um, when we hear from the state governor, you know, blaming former governors and former political leaders in the state for the insecurity, and I remember the report that said, uh, and that was from the governor of the state, Hopo Zadima, saying that one of the suspects confessed, you know, that he was sent by former governor Rocha Sukorocha. You know, one of the things, you know, that I found peculiar was, you, you know, and it, it's pretty much the same thing that we have, you know, across Nigeria every now and then, that instead of proper security agencies and proper, you know, authorities being able to carry the full investigation, we instead hear, uh, you know, politicians blaming themselves. You know, it's either the APC is blaming the PDP or the PDP is blaming the APC. Um, you know, and now, um, you know, Hopu Zodima is blaming Rocha Sukorocha and saying that one of the suspects confessed. Um, that he, you know, he was sent by the former, former governor. Um, you know, and when I read that story initially, I was saying to myself that I don't need to hear from the governor of Imo State. I need to hear from you know the commissioner of police in Imo State. I need to hear from people who are responsible, the investigating police officer um, on those cases, not the governor. The governor is not the investigating, you know, the IPO when it, on any of those cases. And people, if people are arrested, then we shouldn't be playing politics with it. Because these persons who have been arrested have committed crimes against the state and against the people and the, um, you know, um, of, the, of the state. And so it should be an investigation, a police investigation, that should lead us somewhere to completely make Imo State peaceful and the whole of the Southeast um, you know, should be at peace again. Instead of you know, politicians scoring points uh, with, with these crimes. Uh, apparently, maybe that uh, would be the reason why you have you know, the governor retracting taking the step back and saying, we're going to allow, you know, the security agency, of course, at this point, we're talking about uh, the men of the Niger and please, you know, to go ahead and publish these names. But not to say that because we constantly, and that has become, you know, part of a cliche for us in the fight against insecurity. I mean, we constantly say that if you see something, say something. So I would also say that as much as, uh, you know, w we have information, if the governor has information about persons who are committing this crime, the right thing to do would be to report to the police and yeah. uh, let there be proper investigation done. But in all of this that is, you know, going on, I mean, with the security situation that's going on in, you know, the southeastern part of the country, and to be very precise, Imo State, I asked myself, and that's the question, because he is, you know, in Imo State, and I'm hoping to, you know, find out what the role of, you know, um, the security, I mean, what the role of the police has been, how far the police have been, you know, going about discharging their duties. How come mm -hmm. we have not had, you know, a lot of persons? Because um, it, it feels like that, like he had mentioned, Imo State is a very peaceful state prior to this time. You know, it's a place you want to go to and have all of that peace. But I think we do have a guest back, um, Barista Unhuegbu. It's good to have you join us back. Thank you. Okay, so um, maybe you just continue with, uh, you know, the question that my colleague had posed prior to this time? Yes, like I was trying to explain, um, as far as uh, we are concerned, or people like us are concerned, uh, the government needs to do something because the constitution simply that provides that the main essence of government is for the welfare and security of the people. Uh, yes, you know, were saying something about the, the present governor uh, saying that some people are behind insecurity in Imo State and they're going to make uh, mention them. We are going to be fine because if there's actually anybody or a group of people or persons that are uh, behind insecurity in any part of the country, their names should be mentioned so that the people will know, Nigerians will know, so that the Imo people will know. I think at this stage, we're like the issue of uh, you know looking at people, the issue of uh, personal influence, and all the rest. Thank God the governor or the state government has come up to say such a thing. The Nigerians are, uh, are waiting patiently. Even people are waiting patiently to know these people so that their names will be mentioned with facts and figures so that even people will actually know who and who is their enemy in this state. So, so, but uh, the question now is, do you think that, um, you know, the security challenges that's going on in the country, is be it's been caused by uh, some of these persons that have been mentioned? I mean, the back and forth with, you know, the present governor and the former governor. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the truth is that 
um, insecurity all over the world, especially in Nigeria, is is not is not a, is not meant by by the gods. They are all man-made. It's either failure from the government, or you know, in participation or involvement of some individuals or group of people for personal interest or gain or whatever. So it is, it, it cannot just come or or or, 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 throw, or, or throw from the moon. People must be involved. People must be responsible, and people must be held accountable. And not to worry about it, whether it's in Imo State, whether it's in Nigeria, or whether it's anywhere. So that is why we are waiting patiently to hear with facts and figures the people who are actually behind the insecurity situations in Imo State, so that we can know who is our enemy in the state. And also, if we can, if we can extend to the country, we also know who are who is our enemies in the country. There's not to worry about it. All right. Um, well, kindly go on, you know, with this, because, you know, initially I was saying, you know, that it seems like, um, you know, the current governor and the former governor of the state are both playing politics with these security uh, challenges, you know, with one of them saying that the other one, you know, is very likely responsible. And one of the suspects confessed that he was sent by the uh, former governor of the state and, and statements like like those. Um, does it sound like it is simply politics that is being played here? Um, or do they genuinely believe that one of the, you know, of, of the two, or maybe the former governor, truly is, you know, um, uh, creating chaos and insecurity in the state? Well, well, the situation as it is now, uh, from the media and what is uh, going on, speculations and all the rest, uh, the, the present government is accusing uh, uh, the former governor and co, and the former governor is accusing the present government and all the But that is not the issue. The issue here is this. Whether it is political, whether it is personal, whether it is group or whichever name, other name I can call, I don't know. The most important thing here is this. The government for now is in power, and they have the duties and obligations to protect lives and properties of the citizens. So they should do everything possible to make sure that the citizens of Imozes are protected. So if they feel, like that's what I said, with facts and figures, if they feel with facts and figures that they know the people who are behind it, then let them come up and say it. There's nothing big deal here. So you see, we are supposed to have passed the era of hero worshipping. We should have come past that. And that's one of the problems we are having in Nigeria. In as much as in this country, I agree that they play politics with everything. But the politics should not be played with the security and lives of the people. Because both the governor we're talking about, both the former governor we're talking about, both the government officials, both presidents and past, they are also being affected by the institutional situation in this state. So, um, do you think that, you know, the, the fact that, you know, let, let's bring this down, um, the, the need to have uh, the security outfit called Ebibuagu, do you think that this would go a long way in, you know, curbing the uh, challenges that is faced with in the southeastern part of Nigeria? And i also like to find out from you, what has been the role, I mean, how effective has the Nigerian police in Imo State been? Well, the truth is that, by, uh, constitutionally, the body saddled with the responsibility of protecting lives and properties of the citizens is the Nigerian police. Yes, the Rubaku can come in, every other um, security outfit can come in, the groups can come in and all the way because of the current situation we have in the country today and especially in Imo State. That is not bad. But remember, there must be a, a holistic approach to all these things. There must be a cohesion, you know, between them. There must be this integration between all the security aspects so that the security aspects working in the state will now work in tandem with the norms and values of security challenges in, 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 in the country or in that state. So it's not a matter of uh, we have a bubago, we have this, we have this, and all the rest. The question you should be asking yourself now is this. What is the level or the essence of cooperation between the security agents and these uh, uh, vigilante aspects that have been set up in Imo State and all the rest? So I think that is where there is a disconnect. Because whether you like it or not, uh, if these people, if, if the security aspects 
carry arm and some other security uh, uh, outfits like the police, the military, and all the world carry arm. How do you now identify each other? How do you now come to a, co a, a you know a cooperation to each other to begin to battle some of these things? Second thing, who are, will they play by the rules? Who are the ones giving orders? Who are the commanders? Who are the who, who you, you know who are the foot soldiers and all the rest? So you begin to look at some of these things, and most importantly. The government also must be careful because when you empower people with guns that do not have good intention for the people, they are bound to misuse it and they are bound to mess it up. So we must also be careful the kind of people we empower, the kind of people we employ. In fact, let me tell you the truth. The Nigerian police today, as it is, got locked into an extent because the Nigerian police has forgotten or have shifted away from the normal norms of recruitment of police officers in Nigeria. You now recruit everybody to the Nigerian police and give them arms. And that's one of the one of the problems we are having in Nigeria today. Well, Barisar Ogbo, can you give us some clarity or, clarity or exactly on what the nature of security challenges we're talking about here in Imo State? Are we still hearing of kidnappings, of assassinations, of people being uh, being killed or uh, or robbed, you know, in, in their residence? What exactly are the uh, most common um, uh, security challenges Imo State is currently dealing with? Yeah, there are kidnappings in Imo State. Uh, especially kidnapping, they're still kidnapping. Like, for example, I've been in Imo State since the uh, since December uh, till now. You know, they have. In fact, they they, they are hardly past any day in Imo State. You don't hear about one kidnapping or the other. Some happens in the remote areas. Some happens so many places that before even the media comes to take it up, many people will not know. And again, uh, uh, to tell you this, the media in Imo State is also not doing enough. Many people are not even hearing about these insecurity challenges in Imo State because the media, most of the media aspects we have here are not being proactive. It's only during political uh, exercise that you see so many media aspects coming out in Imo State for, for one thing or the other. But most of them don't report simplicity. What happens? Because I discovered there is no cooperation or, you know, a sort of uh, a party between most of the media actors in the most states and the police. There is no cohesion and cooperation between the media houses in the most states and the government. So when they get information, how do they pass it out? And when you understand some of this, you now see that the Imo people are more like it is neither here nor there. People don't hear exactly what happens every day in Imo State. But I believe that these things can be tackled. Okay, but um, we also have feelers uh, from Imo State saying that, uh, you know, the situation, the way it's been reported is not as it is. You know, in the media space, uh, there's a lot of calm and peace in Imo State. I mean, these are feelers that, you know, one has been getting from the state. But moving away from that, uh, I'd like to ask, because I'd ask prior to this time, uh, what is the role, how effective would you say the police is or has been in curbing and in fighting all of this crime and criminality in Imo State? Do you think that they are overwhelmed? No, the, you see, the truth is this. The police in Imo State, to the best of my knowledge, they have been trying in recent times. And they remember that since uh, the, 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 the coming up of the NCAS and the, the jailbreak in Imo State, you know, there seems to be more like uh, a discouragement from the police, especially when you talk about their welfare. Look at last December, this December that just passed. When did the police officers all over Nigeria receive their salary and all the rest? Now, for, for, for police officers that are working in some departments like practical things that, you know, are saddled with the responsibility of, you know, testing this insecurity on daily basis, 24 hours uh, a, a, a day of every day. Do you give them any welfare package for all those things? That they and the answer is no. So in some of these things, you begin to see that we must, in a way, you know, encourage this security officers, like the Nigerian police especially, in order to begin to do more. They are human beings like me and you. And some of us traveled for Xmas, New Year. They did not go anywhere. 
they were in town, you know, testing and making sure that there is security in, in Imo State. So as I speak to you today, they are trying, and we must encourage them by entering me. All right. Can you also share a little bit about the political angles to it? And I, I know you mentioned earlier that uh, what's most important is that the police carry out the investigation and they're able to arrest some of these suspects and, and whatnot. Um, but, you know, is there anything you can share about the political angles, you know, if any, concerning these issues? Uh, the Rocha Sokorocha, um, Uche Umosu, you know, who also had um, um, some issues uh, sometime last week when he was arrested. Um, and of course, Opus or Dima, um, are there any political angles that need to also be addressed uh, for peace to reign in Imo State? Well, I, I, I look at it that um, this whole issue of political angle, political situation, solution is neither here nor there. Because as far as I'm concerned, you have been a one time governor and you're no longer a governor in the state. So I don't see the reason why there should be confusion or problem between the past governor and the governor or the present administration. Your time is off. Your time is off. There's no two ways about it. So you don't have any, even if you have any ambition, you to be the nearer future. Begin to, you know, you know, you know, bridge your grassroots and nothing else. For as far as I'm concerned, it's just only that in Nigeria, we play politics with everything. And remember that we say that when two elephants fight, it is the grasses that suffer. And that is why we are calling on the Imo State government to actually do the needful. Since they have said it, that they know people, that some people that are behind the insecurity challenges in Nigeria, Imo people are waiting patiently to hear their names. Imo people want to know who and who is their enemy. There are no two ways about it. Let me say the one thing, and let me answer this question. So, uh, yeah, you were, uh, your colleague was saying that the situation is not like it is before and all the rest. Yes, I agree with you. There have been a level of advancement and improvement. But as I speak to you today, once it is 6 to 7 p.m. in Imo State, everywhere is deserted. Unlike before, how Imo State used to be. Everybody, if you have been to Imo State before, Imo State is a city, especially Owere, where you go and stay. And for tourism, for enjoyment, and all the rest. That's why I say it, was, it is seen as the most peaceful state in this country. But now it is no longer like that. So what, are, what is happening? People are afraid. All right. Uh, Barrister Justice Uwebu, uh, we thank you for your time. Thank you for giving us some, you know, and of course as much clarity on these issues. Uh, we will, of course, continue these conversations and we hope that uh, security agents, uh, that, you know, are on their feet and will be able to, get, you know, make sure Imo State is safe again. Like you also mentioned, you know, the political angles, um, you know, with regards to the former governor, uh, his son-in-law and the current governor, you know, some of all those things would also need to be brought to the table at some point. Uh, so we can at least uh, ensure that there is peace in Imo State and the rest of the Southeast. But thanks very much for your time. And we wish you a very uh, interesting day ahead. Uh, we're going to move away from the discussions in, on uh, Imo State and uh, move to other um, topics of discussion this morning. And that is mostly with the fight against corruption. In the last few weeks, you must have followed the Auditor General's report and the uh, uh, almost daily updates with regards to it. You know, it's either there is a 9 billion naira uh, that has been misused by the National Assembly or 3.22 billion naira that you know seems to have gone missing to pay to ghost contractors in Nigerian police force. And also yesterday, 127 billion naira unremitted by Customs and Immigration uh, in Nigeria, all by the Auditor General's report. The question is, will the Nigerian government take action? Or are these some of the stories we just read and move on from? We'll talk about it when we come back.